once you get back there, it's like a weird pop culture fever dream. It's like, <laughs> so you'll see like Adam West hanging out with Chewbacca, hanging oh out my with God. Like, like Tara Reid. <laughs> And, you know, and, and hanging out with, you know, uh, you know, any number of people. And uh, it's like, yeah, it's like, am I, where am I right now? You know, right. you're, like, you're, like, you're like, it's the only place like you, you'll never see that gathering of people except at a convention. And it's pretty awesome. Tokyo tonight. Tonight. Hey, what's up, everybody? What's going hey. on? Oh, look, look at that beautiful graphic. You guys, are, uh, you guys are the best. It's awesome. Yeah, I'm glad you like it. I it's nice it. to have you here. I, it's nice to be here. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I mean, you're literally right down the street from me, so I guess I could have just come over, <laughs> you, brought, you know, a handle of Tito's or something. But you know, right. maybe, next time, maybe next time. I feel like we're torn between like actually finding a studio to do this in and to keep it as this, since everybody's familiar with it. But it is kind of silly when we're all very close to each other. <laughs> like, yeah, well, you guys are always invited to the studio here. Uh, oh, you know, thank if you. Want to make it up to Eatontown? Um, Sweet. Yeah, you guys are always welcome here. Uh, it looks like a comic book blew up in here, so oh. uh, you guys will feel very much at home. It is Every- amazing. It is amazing. I was there one time, and they have the Thor hammer. I had to take it off the wall and take a picture oh, with it. God. You were worthy? Yes. Yeah, nice. I was able to lift it. Not surprised. Richie uh, couldn't. I should have unblurred my back. <laughs> Richie could not lift. I should have unblurred my background, because there's literally just all comic book shit hung on the wall, like wizard comics from like back in the day. Um, I didn't know what to do with them, so I framed them. No, you're smart. You definitely don't want to throw them out. No. And- and we're collectors. You wouldn't throw them out anyways, even if exactly. they're worthless. Oh, so, yeah. 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 So what do you do? You put them on the wall. Then you run out of wall space. Yep. And what I happens did. when you do that? Then your wife tells you to get all that crap out of the house. <laughs> I was like, all right, fine. I did. So I rented some cheap office space and uh, we built a studio and that's where everything resides now. Oh, that's fucking perfect. That is perfect. Yeah. I never, um, I'm not married, so I don't have anybody telling me that I need to get rid of anything. But I, I know <laughs> yet. that's how, uh, yet, I know that Tom keeps ribbing me about it, And yet, yet it's going to happen. But like, I feel like that's how I do, like married men either, like you see their shirts chain, you know what I mean? Like normally I have a bunch of t-shirts that just have graphics on them and shit. But like, I can always tell when somebody's newly married and they're no longer wearing what they love anymore. <laughs> they're just like, their eyes are just faded. Yeah, you gotta find the woman that won't put you in the uh, the dad jeans and the the white sneakers and the polo shirt. So yes, yeah. Oh my god, it's like a fucking prison sentence. I would imagine. It is. I don't it know. really is. Yeah. <laughs> so what have you been doing with? Uh, I mean, you just came. We're basically out of the pandemic at this point, but cons were down for a while. Did you guys like figure something out? I uh, oh man, it 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 sucked. I'm I'm gonna be honest I, with you. Uh, I, I was um I started so we got, you know comic book men. If you haven't seen it, uh, mm-hmm. comic book. Uh, a TV show based in Kevin Smith's comic book shop in New Jersey. Um, and, you know, right down the street from all of us. Um, yes. Pretty fun, but I, I never thought they would shoot a TV show there. And I never thought they would shoot a TV show there with me on it. So that happened. <laughs> and everyone's like, well, what's the best part about being uh, on TV or being on comic book? And I'm like, the cons, man. Yeah. I get invited to comic cons now, which is great. You know, back in the day, I would pick maybe two or three a year and, and go to them. Um, mm-hmm. Usually the local ones. So I didn't have to spend money right. and travel but i'd always dreamed about going to the san diego's or the dragon cons or yeah. the, the, the big ones and uh so after being on a comic book based tv show i get invited now it's people you know, i'll get an email saying hey we're, we're throwing a con in uh you know in atlanta georgia or or, or you know houston texas we love the show uh do you want to come out or throw in a convention and they, they wow. fly you out they put you up and it's like one th- big three day party every weekend <laughs> of culture and people who don't give you blank stares when you start talking about vibranium. Oh everyone my knows- God. <laughs> yeah. What is that? It, no, yeah. everyone knows what, they're, what you're talking about. And they want to, you know, they've seen the show. So they want to come and hang out and meet you. And, and it's great. You, you can go to the hotel bar afterwards. And, and, you know, if you play your cards right, you never have to buy a drink all night. You know, I don't, yeah. I, I don't, you know, I don't ask for that, but it just happens. So, right. Yeah, so it's yeah. pretty awesome. And then you know the pandemic hit, and I've been doing them up in that to that point maybe five five years. 
mm-hmm. and maybe you know 20 sometimes 30 cons a year wow. and uh yeah for a whole year no conventions it was right it, it was it, it was pretty bad now my friends were, were, were like man you must be dying no conventions though you must be dying just sitting there at home and it wasn't that bad like if they were, they were still going on sure and i couldn't go then you would be like oh yeah. man everyone's partying except me but in this case no one's partying right yeah we're all in the me. same boat yeah, yeah so it wasn't that bad but man when they 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 started coming back this year i went to my first one in april and it was this little show in hannibal missouri the birthplace of mark twain so i was like all oh, right wow. this is a good place to test the waters and you know you know if i'm if I don't get sick at this one, then you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, if you're in Missouri border. and you don't get COVID, then just from crossing the border, you're good. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. you know, everyone was pretty safe and respectful for the most part. And uh, you know, there maybe like uh, there are several thousand people there, and it, it was it was just fun. So, and everyone survived, and no one yeah. got sick. Was it still but, like a good like? Was the energy still there? You know, oh, what yeah, I mean? like yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was as if. Uh, you know, it was like your, it, it was as if uh, your mom grounded you for a year, <laughs> and then you were ungrounded. <laughs> And you could go out and have fun. I think that everyone not only had that mentality, but they had a bunch of money that they didn't really spend for the whole year. Yeah. They're out dying to just buy. And a bunch of money I, from the government. Yeah. <laughs> they're out, you know, they're out trying to, wanting to buy high ticket items, whether it be right. or statues or, or whatever, and, and just have fun with it. Uh, with the, with the thought in the back of their mind, I was like, Hey, this could, this could get shut down next week. So we yeah. got to do it now. And so that part, that was pretty fun. And man, I went out, I drank, like I had, I, I hung out with people. Um, you know, I, I partied like it was the end of the world, man. And uh, I've been, you know, I, I, I've stepped back a little bit from that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know, right from that con in April, it's been pretty much nonstop up, uh, uh, up to and beyond right now. So it's cool. That's incredible. You've been to so many cons. I want to know what's the best costume you've seen because one of my favorite parts is cosplay to see all the people coming in their amazing costumes. Oh man, I mean it's really so, so. Some people get really crazy. They'll bid big, build the big the they'll build the big giant like Warhammer forty thousand yeah. like to scale yeah. costumes. <laughs> but you then you know they 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 enter the cosplay contest and they'll usually they win. But it's funny. I'll see them afterwards. They're exhausted. It's like they lifted a million pounds. It's so heavy. Yeah, I saw uh, a dude it, this year have a thing costume that yeah. was better than anything I've seen in any movie. I was like, they got to get this guy because it was like you couldn't even see the inside of the costume, yeah. and it looked like the one from like the uh, classic comics with this. He oh, had yeah, like a Jack cigar Kirby with the cigar. Yeah, this yeah, fucking badass. It, it's great. The the lengths that people go through, you know, spend a year, two years building one costume. Oh my god. And you know the technology has gotten better. You can, you know, the LEDs are cheap. You can buy it on Amazon now, so you can yeah. you know, light things up to Kingdom Come, and yeah. uh, the, just the materials you could, you, you know, you can shape them into anything you want now. And yeah. with three D printing, you can build any weapon. You can build any helmet. You can be, build any accessory now, and and sand it down and paint it. It's pretty. It's pretty incredible. And uh, yeah. it's funny. People are like, "Well, do you cosplay?" I'm like, "Bro, I leave. I leave that." <laughs> and I'm not. I'm not 3D printing weapons and and you know gluing, you know soldering and right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that scene in the first Iron Man where Tony Stark's building that Mark One uh, Iron Man suit. That's that's pretty much what they're doing now. Yeah. yeah. So it's pretty awesome. Have you seen the guys on like Instagram and TikTok who post the videos of the construction of their like like literal like Iron Man costumes that yeah. move, glow, like all the flaps yeah they fit together yeah yeah light up um they, oh yeah they have, they have things that that open up and, and yeah it's it's insane it there's really a guy who built a captain america shield and it actually ricochets off of shit that he throws at <laughs> and i was just like where the i'm like first of all one how is that not illegal yeah. and two <laughs> like i'm like what where is he doing this but yeah he like literally threw it at the corner of a brick wall and it hits one end, bounces off the other, and comes right back to him. And I was just like, that's the coolest fucking thing I've ever seen. That's awesome. So yeah. the next step is real life superheroes then. Just build the suits and uh let's I'll fight. volunteer. Yeah, let's fight crime, right? This tribute. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> fucking we just me. need Elon Musk to like adopt cosplay and we'll really get a Jarvis. <laughs> <laughs> he might be crazy enough to do it too. Yeah, I feel right? like he'd be an easy guy to trick into inventing a super soldier serum. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, yeah, that I, would I, be too I'm, hard. Yeah, he pretty much is the the modern modern day tony stark right now yeah, yeah. Or, or actually we don't know yet or he could be a villain you know what i mean like time will tell right right, right. <laughs> i just read an article on that that he is the super villain from the simpsons 
<laughs> they said oh originally God. it was based off of Branson, but they're like, I think it might be Musk. It might be Musk, yeah. Yep, yeah, it's weird. He always I feel like every now and again he tips the scale where he'll talk he'll say something crazy about drones or like whatever it is, and you're just like, uh, that's some fucking supervillain shit yeah. right there. <laughs> like, I don't know what uh I don't know what you got going on, but and then he'll say something cool like, Hey, I'll give six billion to feed world hunger if you guys can show me the show me your work. You're like, all right. Yeah, and by the way, uh, who wants a flamethrower? Because uh, for 600 <laughs> bucks, you can have one. That was yeah. one of the things they had in common. They both had the flamethrower on the Simpsons and, yep. and yeah. on uh, Musk. That's awesome. I think it's yeah. on it. It's yeah. absolutely wild. <laughs> I know. It could. It, I mean, I don't. I don't know. I feel like that whole space trip is going to be a scam too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like the closer we get to that shit, you're just going to be like, is he really sending people to space? I, I think it's just waiting for them to be blasted by cosmic rays and then they turn into <laughs> Fantastic Four. That's that's you know, that, that, it goes. We we're talking about the thing before. That's how it happens. There's some there's some Italian in the trunk of that car he sent to space, just still trying to pry it open. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like comes back as somebody that'd be great. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I've been up to this year: uh, running the podcast studio, and then on the weekends, packing my bags and uh, going to another convention. So I'm nice. pretty much booked up until Christmas, until the end of the year. Oh my god, that's yeah. fucking wild, dude. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But yeah, basically, what happened is uh, all the conventions that were going to happen, you know, they got pushed to early this year, and then that those got pushed to late this year. So they're all happening at the end of the year now. Oh my god! So do you usually hang out with the same like? Is there a crew of you that like all get together for drinks afterwards and this and that that you see at like all the conventions? Typically, when you go to uh, yeah this many conventions, yeah, you run into uh, either you know the same guests that get booked at all of them or the people who work with them, uh, whether it be like a volunteer or the handlers they call them. The yeah, people yeah. take the money and, and like will snap the selfie for you, and mm -hmm. uh, those are the real people you want to hang out with because uh, you know you 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 make you make really good friends with them. Yeah, and um. Yeah, and I'm I'm a guy. Uh, yeah, I like to go to like a weird city. It's like, all right, I need to find the, these four things. Where's the best coffee? Where's the best dive bar? Where do I get a great cocktail? And then where's the good food? Yeah, and oh, nice. Sort of pretty much in that order. Is I'll fly early. And I'll get there at like you know ten in the morning. It's like, all right, we need we need coffee. We need you know where's where's the you know where's like the Rook Coffee of uh, of, yeah. like, of uh, you know of Omaha, Nebraska. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, after that, you find a great lunch. But, you know, you, you, after the convention's over, you want to go get a drink, right? So you go one or two ways. If you go to the dive bar, like, you know, they'll welcome you immediately. When they find you're, out, you're from out of town, then they want your story. And right. Then, and then if you want, and if, uh, if you, if you want to make even more friends, buy everyone around to drinks at the dive bar. Yeah. Which, yeah. You, instant friendship right there. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Do you yeah. still get kind of starstruck at these things or are you kind of oh, used absolutely. to it by now? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I love TV and movies just as much as uh, anybody else does. So, uh, yeah, if uh, if anyone from the original Star Wars universe shows up, yeah, I'm, I'm, flip oh my God. I'm flipping out. Um, you, what's no, the bigot? What's the what's like somebody that you saw where you're like, this is incredible, like first time going out? Uh, Mark Hamill, definitely. I was gonna, it had to be yeah. right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, you know, it's just like that's freaking Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Like, yeah, he 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 took down the Empire. He he's a Jedi. <laughs> You know, it's you know, you got all these thoughts running through your head, but absolutely yeah, that's, you know, that I saw that I, I met him in nineteen seventy seven when I was four years old. Like he was oh my, my hero. So Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. But you know, I, I mean there's so many new shows coming out stuff too. Uh it hasn't happened yet, but if like the cast of Squid Game showed up somewhere, oh dude, I'd be flipping out. Oh my god, like, yeah. that's the newest yeah, <laughs> yeah right? absolutely. I'm but, sure you'll run into them now. Oh yeah. I mean if if they're not doing con I haven't seen them, but they should be doing they should be doing conventions like right, right now. Just yeah. take advantage of the the popularity right now. Do you kind of get like backstage access to some of these guys? Oh, or yeah, is yeah, yeah. Already yeah. kind of hard to get in through. I know. I mean, typically, if you get booked at a guest at a con, um, mm. you know, you have all access pass. But the great part about that is, you know, there's the green room, right? So wherever yeah. he goes and hangs yeah. out, you know, they they serve lunch back there, or they'll have coffee or whatever. Right. And once you get back there, it's like a weird pop culture fever dream. It's like, <laughs> so you'll see like Adam West hanging out with Chewbacca, hanging oh out. Oh my god! Like, like Tara <laughs> Reid, and you know, and and hanging out with you know, uh, you know, any number of people. And uh, it's like, yeah, it's like, am I, where am I right now? You know, right. you're, you're, like, you're like, it's the only place like you, you'll never see that gathering of people except at a convention. And it's pretty awesome. Yeah. If I were you, I'd want to do edibles like right before I go back into that green room. Because then I'd be like, 
Now it's on. I'm sure. Well, I just got back from a con in Denver, so I'm pretty sure most of those people were on edibles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's sweet. That's, that's great. Uh, so what's the next? So after doing the Comic Cons and stuff like that in between it, how do you find time to do like, like you, you said you were going to be in Clerks 3 and stuff yeah. like that. You're also doing the two podcasts uh, and the comic book man. So too, do you, are you just swamped at this point? Like what is your, I, I've definitely, I, I, it's weird for a guy who multitasks as much as I do. I'm really bad at it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, cause you're, you, I always have people after me like, Hey, where's that thing that you said was going to be ready uh, last week? And it's like, Oh, oh sure. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Right. But you know, if that, but then you just got back from a four day show in Denver and uh, yeah, I was like, all right, then you gotta, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I have a problem saying no. So, uh, I don't sleep very much, so mm. that helps, you know. Yeah, it, it I hear you. you. More, it gives you more hours in the day, and uh, you know, I, if 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 I can get work done on an airplane, going somewhere, I'll, you know, I'll do it. Um, waiting around in airports, yeah. <laughs> I'll do it then. Um, right there with you. Yeah, or you know, if it's something I can do on my phone, then I'm I'm sitting in bed at four in the morning, like tapping something out. Yeah, it's, are you, uh, you just figure it out, man? Yeah, are you like so? Because I know we both love. Like we're both nerds in general, anyway. But like, you yeah. have to consume certain content, right? Oh yeah. So one, so w- what's the mix between pleasure and like, fuck? I've got a thing coming up. I gotta watch like ABC. You know what I mean? Like, how do you balance I mean, that? Out? I mean, I try not to be like, oh, I have to watch it, but I mean, <laughs> just split up, like you know, like Squid Game. I didn't want that spoiled. You know, right? That, no, that. absolutely so, not. I remember I started it. Uh, it was late one night. I was at a con. I started in a hotel room, and I mm-hmm. kind of fell asleep to the first episode. But then, yeah, I went back and finished it. And uh, like every night I would try to watch an episode I was, as I was eating like a late night dinner or something. You just kind of right. fit it in as you're doing something else. Yeah. Um, but yeah, something like that. And, and most of the stuff we watch, like you have to pay attention to. Yeah. Absolutely. Just watching the background. So it is it's definitely a time commitment. I mean, these are definitely first world problems. Though. I was it's just like, going to oh, say, man. it's got to be weird to like, like to talk to like friends and shit like that, where you're trying to complain about right. what, oh God, I had to watch uh five episodes another of, avengers yeah another yeah. avengers movie <laughs> gotta go yeah. review it you know yeah, and, Mid- like, um, yeah, and you're and, but the thing if you don't watch stuff fast enough your friends get mad at you oh like, totally what do, you mean, what do you mean you didn't finish ted lasso yet and i was like dude I'm like oh, <laughs> I'm busy i'm busy and there's yeah there's stuff i still yeah there's a lot of stuff i still haven't seen which i, I feel bad and then you get to a point like you know what go ahead and spoil it it's my fault that i haven't yeah watched. oh like, yeah if it's talk about it I Talk feel like it. six months to a year is when, when you, what's your spoiler ratio? When do you feel like you I can't mean, these, these days with stuff coming out this quick? Um, yeah, it's, <laughs> you know, I guess four to six months, I guess. But even like if a month has gone by, I was like, all right, it's my fault. I didn't make it to the movies or I just haven't had time to pull up Hulu or, or, Netflix right. or whatever. And we're, if we're in a podcast and everyone else has seen it, then it's my fault. Oh yeah. Oh, spoil it. Yeah. It's not, you know, what am I going to do? I, there's nothing I can do about that. Yeah, I feel the same way. I yeah. I know people who have like strict restrictions as far as like when they can watch something. And I'm just yeah. like, whenever I get the time to fucking do it, I'm in there doing it. The only thing I didn't get to watch is midnight mass, which I'm catching up yeah. on now. I even seen yeah. it either. It's on the list. It's okay, a say, long, I just but... watched the first episode tonight and it's like, it's great. But also like, I, I'm not, I don't go into my friends chat rooms and we have one, we have one on discord that literally is just called spoilers. And only, and you know, not to go in it because it's for everybody else who's seen a thing. Um, yeah, it's called hashtag spoilers for a reason. So yes, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, I don't go in it unless, uh, you know, I know I've seen everything yet. It's fucking yeah. wild. You hate spoilers. I hate spoilers. My no. wife loves them. I, I, no, you don't hate them. I. It depends on what it is. Like I'm, I've read, I think almost every possible spoiler for the new Spider-Man movie because I just have oh, to know. Man. Yeah, I it, it it's tough to avoid. Um, mm-hmm. so we're, and, and it sucks that right now I'm sitting on a pretty big, well, two <laughs> two big things right now. Oh. And then the biggest thing that is absolutely killing me is uh, I, I went to New York Comic Con, and uh, my friend was working it. They're like, "Hey, what are you doing today?" And I'm like, "Well, I'm I'm gonna I'm at the con. I don't have any obligations. Why?" He's <laughs> like, "Hey, we're I'm kind of shorthanded. Could you help out with the Ghostbusters Afterlife cast?" ton of them are coming in oh my you know God. where all the rooms and stuff are you know being there before can you can you help out you know lead them the the press rooms green rooms all that and i'm like yeah absolutely so you know in walks ivan reitman and and jason reitman and uh, and finn wolfhard and and all the kids from the movie i was like oh this is pretty cool right and uh you know that culminated in their big panel which was on i believe it was friday night their big afterlife panel mm-hmm. and so i'm um, sitting there and 
anticipating the panel's going to end and we escort them out to their SUVs and they go home. But right at the end, they're like, hey, uh, so you want to see some clips from the movie? And uh-huh. everyone is, is going nuts. And then Jason Reitman is like, you know what? Me and my dad think you've waited long enough. Let's just show the whole thing. And Holy so shit. I got to see I got to see Afterlife about six weeks early. At New York. Oh, my God. 3,000 wow. streaming fans, cast and crew in attendance. Uh, uh, it was pretty magical. And wow. it, the, the one directive is like, please, please, please do not spoil this for anybody. Right. Like, right easy enough request. Yeah, yeah. But we, we just had Ernie Hudson on. Yep. And um, he was... Oh, uh, okay. I, yeah i can't i'm not allowed to release it until the 14th oh wow okay so but uh it's it was it was just fucking awesome and i just his excitement i think for the upcoming movie was me because it looks it looked from the trailer is just great and i haven't heard anything but was it good oh it's it's amazing that's right, you cool. know i i'm not gonna say anything else i'm gonna spoil sure, it don't, yeah. it, it is awesome. it, it is so great it is so good and you know thank god because they i don't think they could have another misstep again yeah no it'd be I don't really hard either. to come back from that Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, we've waited so long too. let's yeah. be honest. It's, you know, it's been almost 40 years. Oh, yeah. yeah. 1984 was a long, that long ago. Totally. So, that was when I was born. So, yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah. For that's, sure. uh, yeah. Thank God you said it's not that long ago. I'd have been like, fuck. Um, yeah. And it's uh, and I, I'm happy for a guy like Ernie. Me too. Who I think, you know, he's he's, he's an icon with mm-hmm. Zedemore, uh, But I think I'm sure he's just been waiting for that call. Yeah, you know, like hey, we're, we're back, and, uh, and then uh, you might hit a point where, like, you know what? Maybe they're not going to do this, right? Thanks, because they built such a great world, and so this is such a great just property. Like, I hate to even call it that, but it's yeah, it's like almost like a religion at this point. You know? Absolutely, so, like, you know, just and like I, Star Wars is or Star Trek. Yeah, and I'm glad they got Paul Rudd too. That's another thing that made me feel comfortable. I was like, yeah. oh, solid comedic actor. You know, yeah. guy I know who loves the whole, you know, franchise and everything. So I'm like, that's just great work. Yeah, and I joke around like geez, Ernie Hudson was so down at one point that he he came on our show where we made him drive around in an ice cream truck selling comic books. Like he he was very very good humored about it, but right, you know, I no did step intended. back and I'm like, wow, did we really just make Ernie Hudson drive around in an ice cream truck in like you know an ice cream man's? We were all dressed in costume like with the little hats and everything. Mm. I'm like, wow, oh, what a cool great. day that was. But uh, yeah, <laughs> so. he was he was so, so chill about all of it, too, because you never know when you talk to these guys, if they're going to be like, oh, you know, I don't want to talk too much yeah. about the thing yeah. that made me famous. You know what I mean? But he was great. And he was he was even like, you know, I love I still love the theme. He's like, I love that song. And I was oh, like, yeah. that's so good to hear because I used it to advertise you coming on the show. And I thought oh, you yeah, was going to sure. hear it and be like, fuck this. For sure. Uh, and I yeah. think uh, for a while, yeah, he had talked about, you know, they had a whole backstory for him and they, you know, they mm. had to cut it for time. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's ex-military and, and he had a whole cool backstory, but yeah, you know, no big deal. What's uh, the kid's yeah. name from Stranger Things? The, um, um, well, Finn Wolfhard. The, no, not Finn Wolfhard, oh. but the other, like in the, in the show, one of the cast who they, uh, he said that, um, because they made him, uh, be Winston in the thing. Like, oh, they were a, on uh, yeah, the kid who plays Lucas. Um, yeah. The kid who plays yes. Lucas or whatever. He said that he met him in real life and was like, the kid apologized. He was like, they made me say it. It was written in the script. And he right. was like, it's fine. Yeah. It's yeah, totally yeah, for fine. Sure. yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so great. Yeah. Um, so spoilers, like I agree spoilers like that. I probably wouldn't like, but for some reason for the Marvel stuff, as long as no one tells me the ending. I'm yeah. like, I'm all for like, give me who's going to be in it. Give me the details. I'm I'm full into that. It doesn't ruin the movie for me for some reason. Yeah. And I feel like spoiler is such a relative term. Like to me, like right. a spoiler is Darth Vader. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. father. That's a spoiler, man. Like that, Absolutely. that, that, you know, that would ruin every, that would ruin everything. That's such a surprise in that movie yeah it is so yeah. to be like you know oh you know you spoiled the mid credit sequence in you know iron man 3 like big deal yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not hold the same weight as darth Vader. you know luke you know i am your father come on yeah, yeah i completely agree there's not really much of a twist in any of that shit where you're just like what you know yeah. um yeah but uh, it's not yeah. like you want to watch that bruce willis movie where he's dead the whole time right, right yeah <laughs> It's, it's a, yeah, I guess that one's a pretty big one too. Yeah, exactly. Have you ever accidentally done it? Have you ever accidentally slipped and said something? Uh I did. Yeah, my um, I was at my friend's house in high school, and uh, his parents had just fired up the Lost Boys, and the grandpa comes on, or not the grandpa, you know, the the head. Yes. Yeah. Hey, isn't that the guy? Isn't that the head vampire? And then they're, they're like, "Dude, what the hell?" And then I was like, "Oops!" And I just got out of there. 
<laughs> yeah, oh I thought that, I thought his parents had seen it, or I, or I, you know, what? in hindsight, I don't, I don't even know why his parents were watching the Lost Boys. It totally wasn't <laughs> their kind of movie, <laughs> you know, like teenage vampires, you know, right. in in Santa Carla, California. Oh but also God. in hindsight, I felt really bad for ruining that movie. So, yeah, yeah. I think one of the worst that I've ever seen happen. Well, uh, my grandfather was watching the Poseidon Adventure. He hadn't seen it. Yeah, and um, a uh, telemarketer kept calling the house. So he like would pick it up, like hang up the phone, pick it up, hang up the phone. And finally, he's like, "Would you just stop?" He's like, "I'm watching the Poseidon Adventure." Blah, blah, blah. And the guy was just like, "Gene Hackman dies at the end." And my oh like, dang, <laughs> like oh, and that was that was the worst. That was the worst I'd ever heard. I would have found out what call center the guy was working at. <laughs> I would I would taken a tr- freaking. Yeah. Come oh on. my God. Yeah. I wow. was I was devastated for him. That was awful. Wow. That stinks, man. Yeah, I know. It hurts. It hurts. That one oh. would hurt, yes, for sure. <laughs> Trapped in a death loop. Live die repeat, the original title. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Live die repeat. Did you see the trailer for the new uh Boba Fett show? I did. I, I looked did. fucking sick, man. I'm so glad. Yeah, I uh I'm uh what I'm really happy for Ming Na Wen. Who plays uh, Fennec Shand? Um, yeah, I I think she's a great. I've loved her since Joy Luck Club, but uh, absolutely I address. And I don't know if you saw if you check her Twitter, somebody dug up a photo of her from middle school, and it oh, turned nice. a group shot from her middle school's uh, sci-fi and fantasy club. Mm-hmm. And so you see, you know, left to right, you know, M. Dot Wen, and you see the picture of her little girl. Yeah, you put it side by side with a book of Boba Fett poster oh where she's God. the featured character, and she's kind of like, no. you know, you know what? Stick to your guns, man. Dreams come true. Yeah. You know, so it's so it's so awesome. It is awesome. We were just talking about it backstage a little bit, but I I kind of love the fact that it's come full circle. That everything I got picked on for when I was a kid, yeah. everybody has to now see twenty four seven. Yeah, and then they come to us because we're the experts. Because we absolutely lived, ate and breathed, you know, breathed it for the last yeah twenty thirty years. It's great. I have friends that call who like, and I love it too, because I don't mind taking the time to do it. Uh, but like, they'll call and they'll be like, we just got out of whatever Marvel movie. They just started watching the thing. They're like, what's with the, I'm like, okay, so here's the thing. And the MC and like, I'll literally, I'm like, do you have an hour at least? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Cause it's going to take some time. Yeah. I remember like, who's, the, who's that weird looking dude? He's building the pyramids. I think I'm like, oh, that's apocalypse. So that's the, new, <laughs> yeah. that's the next Men movie. Yes. Uh, yeah, exactly. And I'm like, I don't know if they're going to, my favorite thing is too, is like, I always feel bad. Cause I'm like, I don't know if they're going to do it justice, but like, let me tell you what he really is like. And then right. we'll see what he's like in the movie. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. too much information, but I'm like, yeah. it's too bad. Yeah. I'm like, but I I'm know like more that. about this than I do about like Europe or the U S you know what I mean? For whatever. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, my own, yeah. Like tomorrow's election day. I was like, who's, who are the, who are we voting for? I don't know. <laughs> Explain to me in terms of Charles Xavier and Magneto, who do I, <laughs> right. whose right. vision am I going with? Yeah. Who, which one would you, is the, yeah. Which one is, it's Professor X. Which one's Magneto? Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're exactly. talking like House of M or yeah. I feel like the problem good. with politics is they're all supervillains. There's no, there's no hero here. Pretty much. Yeah. We, we get caught in. They're just the smart supervillains that make you think that they're the good guy. Right. Yep. That's I, that's why they're the supervillain. <laughs> I had a bit for a while that I was doing. I still do it every now and again, but it's basically just how like I can't stand when adults are like I can't get into the you know, uh, sci-fi fantasy films or whatever. It's not real enough for me. And I'm like, our whole existence is sci-fi and fantasy. Like the Democrats write some kind of magic bill spell. And then four years later, the Republicans come up with a counter spell that blocks it. You know, <laughs> it's all just magic. <laughs> right. None of it makes right. any fucking sense. Yeah. So it's Grand all, door. yeah, that's all it is, is, uh, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, and then we believe them. We're like, oh yeah, no, this, this money holds the key to whatever, you know, like this magic right. bill. It's fucking ridiculous. We have magic cards that swipe shit and give it. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. But they're like, yeah. no, I, I don't. I can't get into this. I'm like, you're already in it. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, exactly. It's just fucking weird to me. Have you we had somebody in the Matrix? Oh, it's we crazy. are. Like yeah. from from the Jetsons when we were little, we were like, that'll never happen. Now we're talking on TVs to each yep. other. Yeah, Did you see the sure. Jetsons car? The, I mean, well, it's not really a Jetsons car, but it's basically exactly. It's like a. Um, it's a flying vehicle, I, I guess, or whatever, but like, it is like, it's got like a glass case and it's, <laughs> and it only fits one they, person. They had it on wall street. Oh, they did. Where, yeah. Cause they, they were bringing it to, they were bringing the stock out. So they're like, this is what's going to be happening. It's going to drive you from like the rooftop of this building oh where it's God. all drone. So it's just you getting yeah. into this drone yeah. and it flies you where you have to go and drops you off. Wow. Yeah. 
And you don't need like yes. a pilot's license for it. And they basically said like, it's just kind of, it basically, it does. It functions as like a drone. It's like a video game controller when you get in and yeah, so I'm excited. <laughs> so yeah, some guy with like an iPhone hooked up to it and he's piloting. <laughs> <to the next laughs> okay, you, dr- yeah. you drop like 200 feet and he's like, I got a text. I'm sorry. Right, right. Yeah. yeah my <laughs> Wi-Fi cut out. I was like, oh man. <laughs> wow. Oh my god! Well, I love those dudes that are flying around in like the Iron Man suits now. Basically, the, oh, yeah. the jetpack. It, yeah. it looks it looks fake. I mean, it, I know it's real, but like the the effortlessness in which it takes them to go from like I saw one dude go from one rooftop to the other rooftop, and it was the craziest shit I'd ever seen. Meanwhile, I can't even deal with the virtual reality stuff. Where you, where you or the yourself? Yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Use that. <laughs> blows my mind we'll, we'll get there soon enough yeah i'm waiting for yeah. it i know it'd be really cool <clears throat> i think the uh as much as i hate it the the meta shit that uh, zuckerberg was talking about <laughs> i think he's gonna be the first one to like breach that. remember the old not the old old one but the johnny quest cartoon that came oh, yeah. after the old one right I, mm-hmm. I bet you any amount of money in like six years we're gonna have that shit that he would go into that world where he would like pop on the virtual reality thing and he'd be 3d yeah, I mean, we're, we're 3D, but you know what I mean. Right, uh, <laughs> a little behind my Johnny Quest days, but yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, I can't. I'm I'm waiting for all of this. I I will accept all of this. <clears throat> Me too. Yeah, I'm oh. ready for it all. Anything, anything besides just like I don't even care if it winds up like opening up a hole or something like that, and something crawls out of it to kill us. As long as it's not us for a change, you know, just spice it up. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Or if it creates an inter- interdimensional rift and things could start flying through, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, common so, enemy. That's what we need to unite us. I get it. I see what you guys are going with this. <laughs> <laughs> they would put a Trump hat on that beast so fast and claim it as their own. I, are I, you I, kidding? Didn't we have that common enemy? It was called COVID, and it didn't change a thing, man. It just made people angrier, and it's That's it crazy. It exactly, stinks, man. I thought everyone would be like hugging each. Well, you know, we would just yeah. be getting along with each other. We almost all died, and uh. Yeah, it it turns out it, that did it didn't really it didn't really do that. And I was like, oh, yeah, man. yeah, kind of it start it stinks. But what are you going to do? There was just forty dudes protesting outside of Wendy's to to open back up. <laughs> You're like, oh, okay, is this how it's going to go? I imagine if they did actually have somebody release COVID or whatever, and they just this is one guy in the room like, I told you it wouldn't work. <laughs> it's like they're paying yeah. out to him. Like, oh right. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. He 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 won the bet. Yeah, exactly. You're like. <laughs> No, it'll bring us together. And he's like, man, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. so. But all right, you want to you want to try it? All right, but yeah, but yeah. It, uh, yeah. I, I, do we need an Independence Day? Do we need Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum to save us all? <laughs> Maybe we do. Maybe we do. Absolutely. I'm so bummed that they fucking didn't have uh, or that Will Smith turned down Independence Day three. I oh. mean, not the actual script, but like apparently before it was actually pretty decent with him in it. Yeah. And then when he turned it down, they were like, well, I guess we can go ahead and make it shitty. Yeah. I I mean, what what else does he have to do? Yeah, I know nothing except for for some reason make TikToks now. <laughs> yeah, he's something. big on TikTok. I don't I get it. He's, he is huge. It is weird. Yeah, it is really fucking weird. And then he gets to do that red table shit where his wife embarrasses the hell out of him for like a every every other yep. month. Yep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's like talking about their sex life. I, I guess he loves that too. Yeah, I, I think he does. He's like whatever keeps the franchise going. Uh, Building the that's... brand. That's the uh, that's the ultimate goal, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> How often are you like in the loop on on like Marvel shit or even like Star Wars stuff or any of that kind of stuff where you know something way ahead of somebody else, other than the Ghostbusters? Um, thing, I don't. Like... Yeah, uh, I I think that's pretty tough. I think uh, nowadays with the internet, with trailers, it, right? Yeah, everyone's pretty much on the same page now. And if you're a super fan, then I, I think if you're a super fan, the stuff, the new stuff coming out. You know all the backstory already. You, right. Either you've read, you know, like the Timothy Zahn books, or you've watched Clone Wars and Rebels, or you've mm-hmm. read in a comic book, or uh, you were on Reddit and you were, you read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah, I think I think guys like us, when we're really into something, we educate ourselves on the backstory. Yeah. The and, yeah. and what's coming up next, and what could happen, and alternate, you know, alternate alternate versions. Sure. Yeah, we're like we're the dudes who scour through the IMDb like trivia section. Right for the movies we love, and we know every like lost scene and all that. Yeah, that's. But guys, like us, I think Star Wars, I definitely keep up on. Uh, I I want to think, anyways. But that, geez, it's such a big world now. Yeah. Um, the Marvel and DC stuff, uh, for the most part. Uh, sometimes I don't get to all the comics right away. You know, it yeah. Takes yeah. A while to, to get to. Um. Uh. But yeah, for the most part, 
uh, you know, as soon as the trailer is out, you know, we all know about it. We all then we watch it 15 times. So you never oh. had like a Russo brother walk in and be like, Iron Man does the snap. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like... No, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I'm, like... I, I'm not at that level. Uh, okay. Kevin, maybe. Mm. Okay. Kevin, maybe. But I think the last time Kevin got a heads up on something was uh, Captain Marvel where they're like, he got a call and they're like, hey, um, so you're going to be in the next Marvel movie. He's like, really? And they're like, well, kind of. <laughs> And they're like, well, Stanley's going to be in Captain Marvel. She's going to be reading the script of Mallrats. And oh, Kevin's nice. like, oh, so I don't get to be in it? Oh. He's like, well, you do kind of. You're, you know, it's going to say Mallrats written by Kevin Smith like that. So that basically puts you in the universe. Yeah. Oh, there you go. But right. it's not, yeah. But it's not going to be. It's going to be a Stanley cameo. And yeah, you got you got it. That's cool. But yeah. I think he, I think Kevin was like for a second was like oh man I get to be in the in a Marvel movie and I was like not quite buddy not quite oh man but, how much I bet he wants to direct one so bad I don't know about directing one he's always been like I don't want to do the big budget blockbuster right because that means you you know if you screw up a two hundred million dollar movie that's a lot of you know it's more weight than say like Clerks two you know, yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> thanks uh, you know you're you're not responsible for a two hundred million dollar budget. But I, I'm pushing for him. I think, uh, you know, now that Stan's not around and they're not doing the Stanley cameos anymore. Yeah. I think Kevin should take over for the cameos. Uh. I think the Kevin Smith cameo would be awesome uh, for a couple of reasons. Kevin's always been a champion for comics and pop culture, mm -hmm. even before it was cool. So I think that makes sense. I think Stan would, would have heartily endorsed this. Yeah. You know, I was like, hey. Let 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 Kevin let's let let Kevin do him now, true believer. Like I, <laughs> I really genuinely think Stan would have endorsed that, and I, I thought I think it would be cool. Yeah, you guys got to meet him a, uh, a couple times, right? Yeah, Stan came on the show twice, mm -hmm. and then after that, I would see him at Comic Cons, and sometimes he would remember me. Sometimes he'd have to be reminded a little bit, right? But uh, yeah. it was it was it was cool. Yeah, um, it was cool when he came on the show. As he come he came and hung out for like four hours. Wow. And if you've ever met Stan at like a Comic Con, if you're lucky, you got maybe a minute. Wow. Yeah. You know, uh, like, I never hey, got to meet him. Hey, True Blade. But yeah, he stuck around. For, we got to see him for four hours. We ate lunch with him. Uh, we made him sign the stack of things. Oh, my wow. God. He answered all our stupid questions. And uh, it was, it was that, that, that was, that was pretty cool. And uh, yeah, we tried to get him back a third time, but it just didn't work uh -huh. out. So, and then, but yeah, then the see him at a cons. Uh, his people were like, oh, hey, Ming, what's up? You want to uh, stand here? You want to say hi to him? Like, do I? <laughs> uh, and I'd, I'd ask him how he was, and uh, yeah, it, it, that was pretty cool. Um, that is cool. Yeah, you know that, that guy's that guy's you know he's Mark Twain, he's Walt Disney, like he's yeah, he's he's the he's in my mind the greatest storyteller ever. So yeah, um, I was pretty lucky to have been able to met the guy several times. Yeah, it was definitely very cool. I, that That's cool. one I of my biggest never... regrets. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, is that I was actually at a Comic Con that he was there, and I'm like, oh, we should do this. And we're like, oh, we ran out of time. We're like, next time, of course not. Yeah, I, I understand. Uh, you know, usually at some of the bigger shows like New York, it was like three hour wait to see yeah. him, even yeah. if you, you bought the VIP package or whatever. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, at that point, after you hit all the Marvel movies, like it was expensive. Yeah. Anywhere from yeah. 100 to $150 dollars, uh, to, to get either his autograph or his photo. Wow. Or, you know, they would have maybe a VIP package for 500 bucks, you know, and that's what the yeah. market dictated. It's not like he was demanding that. Um, right. What yeah. people w would pay for it. And to me, it was well worth it. But I understand that's a lot of money. Sure. You know, but but I think now that he's gone, I meet so many people it's like, dang, I should have bought the hundred dollar autograph. I'm like, yeah, yeah you probably should have. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that he was never jaded by any of it. You know, he just always enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you're not in your early 90s and you're know, going to, you know, 10, 20, 30 cons a year. Yeah. Not enjoying it. So, yeah, I think, right. I think he uh, I, I think he had fun doing them for sure. Yeah, he was Um, he, he I remember he was doing something uh, where he again, where he wound up like interviewing this this young guy or whatever, wanted to interview him. And he was just great about it. Like apparently yeah. like there was a, a it came out like after he had passed away. But this kid got to spend time with him and Stan was just like telling him everything. And he was like basically doing it like a um, I don't even think it was for anything at the time. He was just kind of like a fan yep. and he had written a letter or something like that. And Stan was like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You want to interview? Yeah. Come on down for 10 minutes. Yeah. I, I thought. Yeah. I think he did that all the time. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Cool. Is there somebody there that like you were actually kind of like scared to meet? 
Um, I don't know if I'm scared, but I think uh, when the, I, I, I was a big Walking Dead fan, so uh, when Negan hit, and uh, um, I went to a con where Jeffrey Dean Morgan was there, nice. and he was, he was Negan. Negan's pretty big at the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, he still is, but you know, the, uh, you know, after he was introduced, I was like, holy crap! You know, he, he had like block long lines. Uh, but I was going in. I saw him. He was out smoking a cigarette, <laughs> and. I was walking by. I was like, "Do I do I say hi to him?" I was like, "Man, this is kind of you know, he's intimidating. He's Negan, and and you know, yes. or what Supernatural is you know, Pappy Winchester, or he's a uh, comedian from Watchmen. So yeah, he's, yeah. he's a pretty tough character. Uh, but finally, I just decided. I was like, you know, I'm I'm screw it. I'll just go say hi to him. Right. And so I went. And I was going, uh, uh, "Hey, sir, my name's Ming. Uh, I'm on Comic Bookman. It's the show that comes on after yours. Uh, you know, I, I just wanted to say hi." He's like, yo, Ming, I know who you are. I watch the show. Like, what the, <laughs> what, what, do you, what the hell? Like, I love the show. I'm like, so I, you know, I jaw great. dropped. had to pause for about three seconds. I'm like, you watch our show? What? <laughs> why? You know, I was like, why, why are you? Yeah, because to me. Right. Uh, but he was like, no, no, I watch it. And then he started talking about specific details of some some of the episodes. So he really wow. did watch it. He wasn't just saying it. And uh, he was like, hey, man, it was really cool. We had Ralph Macho on. He was looking for the plate, the all valley karate tournament play set i was like holy crap this guy's a fan That's he's like great. dude yeah he's like dude i'm in all this nerd shit like you are like don't you know i'm not i'm, I'm like you know that's kind of that's, that's kind of why i'm having so much fun right now i was like yeah. dude, that's awesome so that's cool. so that was cool but it was definitely intimidating though yeah it's like finding out um like all those big celebs i can't remember the guy's name now it's driving me crazy he was in magic mike but they have a D, a private D game that they play yeah like channing tatum i think right yeah like, channing tatum's D&D. in it and um yeah. Oh my god, the guy from True Blood and uh and all that the, the huge like jacked dude who played the wolf. Um I can't think of his fucking name. I do this every episode, by the way. <laughs> every show. Yeah. It's so bad. I don't know I don't know why, but I have to forget one person's name that's like on the tip of my tongue. But yeah, and they but I love finding that stuff out. Yeah, it's cool. A lot, of them, yeah, a lot of them are, are really nerds. They play D D or or you know, the other uh, Fortnite is big, yeah. um, you know, video gaming. Um uh, are you a big I, gamer? I was, but man, they're so involved now. Like you, you know, I, if, you know, if you want to play Fortnite decently, you got to put hours into it. You got to train basically, yeah. you know, like, you, <laughs> yeah, things like that. And then, you know, some of the, the RPGs, you know, you're talking, you got to, you got to be on them all the time. So yeah. I, yeah, I don't have much time for them now. I like back in the day when, uh, like, after, especially after I got my first job, you know, then I can go and buy all the cool PlayStation games and the consoles big ass tv so i was really i remember playing final fantasy 7 when it first came out yeah and i went and i beat it and i was like oh man that was cool and they they have a little clock on the bottom showing how much time has elapsed total mm. and it was something it was like 78 hours i was like holy crap i, I literally put more than three three solid days into this game <laughs> but it was I, worth it like that was they built such a cool world i was like oh that's yeah. cool but i didn't even solve it in the, like the right way <laughs> You know, there's always the the way where you get the different ending and everything. I was like, oh, oh yeah, man. like do I go back and do that? Like, I don't know, man. That so, was always the worst when you would find out there was an alternate ending to a fucking game, and you'd yeah. be like, I just I can't do it again. I don't have it in me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was like, holy crap, Metroid's a girl. Like, I didn't get that ending. Like, yeah, we had to visit every world to get that ending. I was like, oh, all right. right. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, we're both nerds. It's ridiculous. It's not oh, yeah. even like a. Oh, it's not even funny. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And then like, and that's the other thing too is like, I I remember the first time when I was a kid, I thought like I should probably try to beat this video game because I would play it for fun. And then I was like, I didn't realize you just should, you'd sit, sit there and play it all the way through. But it was yeah. back when you couldn't save them. Right. So I had to like leave it on and like hope it that didn't freeze to the fucking TV. <laughs> or yeah, you had to hit a save point. It was impossible. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, that's what cheat codes and game genies are for, my friend. Oh, uh, dude, I remember. <laughs> you keep going. I still do that now. My friends and I are playing. Uh, you, have you played Valheim? No, I've heard so much about it though. It's a great. We we picked that up over the pandemic because there was fucking nothing to do, and then it's such so, such a great game. Like for for it was twenty bucks. Yeah, and for and kind of like the graphics are still somehow oddly beautiful, even though they're not as advanced. You know what I mean? Like they did a really good job building this game. But as of late, uh, I've been dipping into the uh, cheat code area. So I created this like alternate world and I just keep conjuring like like using dev commands to like bring up. And I keep bringing it back to ours. And I'm like, we have these new things. And they're just like, why are you doing this to us? But then they're like, "Okay, yeah, I need something else. Yeah, yeah, give me. Yeah, what else? Yeah, (laughs) yeah, what what else? else Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, so it's pretty awesome. Oh, Hacking games is what is what is is half of what gaming is all about. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, no, there's no shame in that. I think the first time I did it was to um, get uh, get to be supersonic throughout like the first level of the game, and then I would just plow through the whole. <laughs> and people were like, "Who is this fun for?" And I'm like, "Me. It's right. fun for me." Right. There's you know the negative world of Super Mario Brothers. There's yes. yeah. There's all kinds of stuff, man. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. And I great. feel like if the gamers, di- uh, people who developed it, didn't want you to find it, oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. going to put it in there. Exactly. Yeah. Oh man, I remember. Did you have Atari when you were a kid? Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. That was my I had first Atari. I, had, I uh, for a while, uh, I begged my parents for one, and they, you know, they didn't want me to ruin my grades and rot my brain. So I just go to my friend's house every day. And, you know, <laughs> like and uh, one of our family friends won Atari in a Captain Crunch box. They had like a contest where you pull out a certificate. Wow! And they won a. They had one already. So they're like, so, so they end up selling it to us. So thank God. Oh, nice. And, uh, that was, yeah, that was awesome. So finally I got it. And uh, yeah, it was life changing, man. It was like, it changed my life for sure. I had spent hours playing that thing, but it just it was something to look forward to. You yeah. Know, you know, from school, like when you were doing something you didn't want to do, it was something <laughs> to look forward to, to do after the thing you didn't want to do. Absolutely. And like the weekend was all about waking up to play the game again. Oh, yeah. 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 And then, uh, you know, on the, that magical day, your birthday or Christmas or whatever, you got a new game or, or your grand, your grandparents came to visit. Yep. Oh, man. It was, yeah, it was great. Or, or your friend got a new game. Oh, you yeah, could run over yeah. and play that. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was, yeah, for sure. That was the best. I remember unwrapping the Nintendo, the Super NES that came with Robbie the Robot. Yep. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, wait. That means you're a rich kid, huh? Because uh, <laughs> I was going to say, I did not get that Nintendo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Because a rob- I, the only reason they put that robot in there is so it could be an entertainment system and not a gaming system. Yeah. They were trying to, yeah. They're trying to market it as an enter- entertainment system. Right. That robot really didn't. They had that with like two games that used it. Horrible. They were yeah, so late. Gyromite. Gyromite yeah. with the, the pipe and stuff, right? Yeah. You just walk up to a colored pipe. It's like, all right, open. You go through, and that was it. That's all the robot did. Yeah. Was, me and my brother used to play it. He used to take the place of the robot because you just press down the blue or yeah. red button. Yeah. So you didn't even, <laughs> Otherwise, it took an hour. You didn't even need the robot. Yeah, but they, they had to put it in there so legally they could keep, call it an entertainment system. Oh it was God. uh it was ridiculous. Do you remember the first thing that got you into this? Like the first thing that brought you into like nerd culture? Um, I had to be at Star Wars definitely in seventy seven. And then um a couple years later when I was in first grade, uh this kid in class handed me uh a copy of Avengers two fourteen. So basically it was basically my very first comic book. And wow. I was kinda like what is this? He's like, Well, it's it's a comic book. You, you know, you, you know Batman and Superman, right? Like this is where they started. Mm. and um and yeah i'd never seen iron man before or uh, on the cover is uh the ghost rider or ghost rider is taking down iron man like oh, the, nice. they're fighting and captain america is in the background and tigra and i'm like what you know six-year-old like, it was <laughs> it's like what is this right i devour that thing cover to cover um yeah even like all the ads for fart powder and like you know x-ray <laughs> yeah. that fascinated me uh they were there were ads in there for the Saturday morning cartoons, like the Shazam cartoon and all that, that fascinated me, the, but all the superheroes, every, yeah, all of that. Um, just like, I, I went, I went way, way into it after I read that first issue. So, and I, and I'm, I still have it somewhere, that first copy, nice. whatever, which is cool. So, um, but yeah, that, that definitely got me in. Yeah. I think star Wars had a big, was pretty huge star Wars. And later on, I started collecting GI Joe figures. That's awesome. That got me way in. Cause they had a, they had the cartoon, they had a, a movie, um, same thing with the Transformers. So uh, the eighties were a good time where you know you would yeah you, would, you yeah. would watch something and then there would be a toy line for it or there would mm. be a toy line and they made the cartoon to sell more toys. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I think I think it was a great time to. That was the Secret Wars, right? They made that comic yep. series yep. because yep. Of, yeah, yep. I used to have those toys, toys man. They yeah, toys. I used to have the Spider Man and the and the uh, Wolverine one where you like clip on his claws for some yep. reason. I don't know why they couldn't build them into the toy, but sure, <laughs> yeah, uh, the... I, I love Sterling Green here. Is like Mad Magazine or cracked? Like Mad, bro. Like cracked. Yeah, of course. Yeah, right. Yeah, Mad one hundred percent. Foldins, man. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. What I was remember... your favorite toys? Oh, uh, oh, I was a GI Joe fan for sure. Um, oh, really? Yeah. When I was nine, I moved to a new neighborhood, so I had to make friends with all the all the kids who were there already. Mm-hmm. And I remember getting there, and I was like, "Hey, so what are you guys? What are you guys into out, out in South Bend, Indiana?" And they're like, "Well, we play with these." And they pulled out He-Man figures. Nice. I'm looking at them, I'm like, "Yeah, it was pretty cool. They're big. 
And uh, but I was like, all right, there's a there's a like a muscular white dude with a bowl haircut and like <laughs> furry <laughs> underwear. All right, I guess he's cool. He got he's got a big sword. That's cool. Skeletor guy guy looks pretty cool. He's purple. He's been yeah. Working. Uh, Ram Man like actually did something. That man a bunch of weapons. <laughs> But ultimately, I was like, I can't really relate to these guys. You know, like I, I'll never be this guy. Um, and yeah, I think part, you know, part that's part of the fun is where you, you know you can you know kind of pretend to be that guy or aspire to be him. Yeah. Uh, but then I found these little three and three quarter inch figures. Like, what's this? What's this? Like, oh, this is GI Joe, and these bad guys are Cobra. I'm like, whoa, what's Cobra? Looks cool. Yeah. They, you know, they're they're they the the villain. Their vehicles were like all black or they're like dark colors. I was like, this is cool. I'm gonna get into this. So. Um, I got into GI Joe and uh, I end up turning the whole neighborhood. They're like, screw this He-Man crap, <laughs> threw them in the bins, like, and they all started playing with GI Joe. So I kind of turned the neighborhood, and uh, yeah, ever since then I was like, I was way into it. So it was cool. The figures were relatively inexpensive, so you could get you know maybe one a month or something or whatever your yeah. budget was. But uh, their vehicles, I love the vehicles. Like they're all the scale, and they all they all they all bombs or guns or missiles. So yeah, you blow. You could pretend to blow stuff up with them and you know we're in the middle of the cold war this was the the uh early to mid 80s so it, it, cobra was kind of like the you know russians or yeah, a yeah. enemy yeah. faceless enemy hell-bent on taking over the world so uh yeah that paired with the cartoon and then there's a comic book series that marvel put out yeah it was you yeah. know they built this whole cool world so yeah uh, definitely gi joe was a was a, was a future trend of nice Mine was, I had every Ninja Turtle figure you could ever imagine. Oh, man, yeah. Like, just, I had the bus, I had every side character, I had the uh, Krang and the thing, and uh, I played with those constantly, and then uh, I lost them all in uh, Sandy. Uh, oh, no! Oh, no. dude, it was, I don't even, I, I can't oh, even, yeah. Man. So they're in, the, they're in the middle of the Atlantic right now. <laughs> 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 yes some mutated fish are like this is for fucking cool like yeah it's uh it's such a bummer man i'm i'm so pissed that they're all gone but yeah that and a, a bunch of x-men figurines oh man yep all that shit i've recently gone back out because i lot you know i i missed some comics too but i had um i've actually like i don't know why but i have this memory for all the comics i had as a kid like all the marvel team-ups so like every time i go to a comic book store like i'll find ones from like the 80s and i'm like trying to like rebuild my collection yep. from memory oh that's pretty cool yeah it's, uh it's yeah really uh, nice uh, especially not a lot of people did that over the pandemic they pulled out all their old books and like oh man i'm missing this issue and this issue and they, they would call the secret stash and, uh, and uh fill in yeah. their collection so uh that actually nice. kept the store afloat in a way mm. Nice. I feel the same way, man. It's weird that like um, there's a comic book store, there's a comedy club out in um, New Hampshire, um, and right around the corner from there's a comic, as a comic book store, and I would do like a couple book signings there or whatever. But I became friendly with those guys, so they would come see the show. And literally during the pandemic, I would just like call them and like search their website for new yep. stuff, and I would just kind of be like, hey, "You got this?" <laughs> like I'm like, people are telling me to read that, and it was just like whatever you could do, you know. Yeah, it's like we'll throw it in your pile. Come pick it up on Wednesday. Yeah, 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 great. exactly. Yeah, or they yeah. like ship it out and stuff. It was yeah. so great. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, the pandemic was very good for collectibles and uh, and key issues of comic books. It drove just drove the values way up. I was gonna say, um, it seems yeah. like the cards are finally picking. Oh that yeah, up. yeah. Like, all of the cards went up huge. Yeah, yeah. Which I have like, which is so crazy. I still haven't gone through them to like look at any or look anything up. But like, um, like I have the entire ninety five Fleer X Men Ultra set. Oh, whatever yeah, the hell. Yeah. And it's like that stuff was never worth anything. I just liked having it. And now one of my buddies was basically yep, just check like, it out. "Yeah," and he's like, "You got to go." Like all the, I have a box of like those special cards that used to get like the yep. holograms and shit. All of them. I think I have that stuff too. I'm gonna now. I'm yeah, gonna make me oh, dig it all out. We should go look, dude. It. That's collected. You want to take that out? Run an eBay, you know, complete it. item search on it. You may be very surprised. Oh my god, that'd be great. I'd be so yeah. fucking pumped if that was it. Would um, you sell it though? I don't think I could sell it. I feel like that's selling my childhood. I don't think I could. Depends, I mean, man. If if you have a double or two, or or, or the way I justify yeah. is like, hey, you know, all right, these cards are. You know, if I sell these three cards, I can go and get like a Blade Runner prop replica Deckard blaster or something, yeah, or something yeah, that I really right. want, right? Yeah. Or, uh, you know, I could get that Funko Pop figure I wanted, or I, I don't know, you know, any number of things. But yeah, yeah, yeah. there was Isn't a uh, uh, a thing that it's probably not worth anything, but I've kept it forever for no apparent reason. Remember when the Marvel vs DC came out and it was like really popular? The second yeah. one where like. 
they had a card set for it and they mixed up the names of a DC and Marvel character. And I have the, the mistake, but yeah, I feel the, like the error cards. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I'm like, I don't think anybody knows about it, but me. Yeah. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't really fucking matter. I, I would look, you may be surprised. All right. I'll check it out. I'll you may keep, be surprised. Uh, yeah. I'll go through them. For what sure. Were you saying, Tom? I'm sorry. I think I cut you. Oh, no, I was going to say, we have a couple of uh, good questions. So it's only like, right. yeah, up. Transformers or GoBots? That's not even a question. Get out. Come on. That's Transformers uh, all day. Transformers, yeah, the GoBots are the white trash. Uh, <laughs> Hot Wheels or Matchbox? Oh man, see this one's even. This one's more difficult. Yeah. I. Um, I mean, I. So, I. 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 I've got maybe like twenty uh, Hot Wheels and Matchbox mm -hmm. cars in my collection somewhere, but um, I mean, but they're they're. I, what I discovered is the car collectors. They're a different breed, man. They're, yeah, they're they're crazy and they're serious. And you don't want to mess with them. It's like another gang. Absolutely, <laughs> um, like that. Remember, people who collect Hess trucks. Yeah, yeah. I remember back in the day, uh, we would uh, when I was collecting Star Wars figures, befriended the guy who worked at Toys R Us. It's like, hey, new shipments coming in. You wait in the parking lot an hour early, uh, but at the other end of the parking lot would be the Matchbox Hot Wheels guys. <laughs> you didn't mess with them because they were waiting for the the yeah, they were waiting different thing, but. You know, they're still collectors, man. You didn't mess with them because they're a weird yeah. bunch, man. I feel like there's a uh anchor man kind of parody there you oh, can yeah. do with like the news anchors versus the oh. <laughs> yeah. hot wheels yeah. versus other nerds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean there's huge value in, in certain ones, you know, just like yeah. anything else, but they're 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 a weird they're a weird bunch, man. Look out for the Hot Wheels guys. Jackie Cation is a as a comic who's uh just another huge nerd. She's got a podcast called The Dork Forest. And her husband's a comedian who's also another huge nerd. And he's got a collection of those cars, but as different, uh, all the superhero ones. So every one that like Hot Wheels or Matchbox, I think, came out with that was a superhero. He's yeah. got them all. It's crazy. It's beautiful. Yeah. And I think they, they made them for pretty uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the superheroes for sure. So yeah, yeah there's a whole car. There's like a, like a Superman one. Yeah. They're pretty cool. They They're are really, really awesome. They look great. Um, we got it. We almost had you for an hour, but I got two more questions for you. Can you? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We ask everybody on the show this. Uh, if you could go back in time and give yourself a piece of advice that would help you today, what would it be? Oh, man. Um, geez. Uh, I, I probably would have. I don't know how far back or how recent, uh, but I, I would probably would have bought stock in GameStop, I guess, or, or <laughs> <laughs> like a whole ton of it or AMC or whatever. Like that's that was, that's short term. Like if I go back one year, I'd probably do that. Um, <laughs> geez, even farther back. Um, well, we always have those dreams where we go back to the 70s and we buy, you know, uh, we buy, we find on the drugstore rack the whole rack of like the fierce appearance of Wolverine because yeah. that book is huge right now. Oh <laughs> so, my God, I saw yeah, it. Yeah, it, it would probably be buying stupid things, but I mean, you're, I, philosophical advice, I, I, don't, um, I guess I probably wouldn't. I don't know. I, I'd be like, you know, don't waste your money on that, but you know, that kind of <laughs> shapes who you become, though. Even yeah, if you learn a lesson from that. So, and uh yeah I, like i don't think i may i don't think i made anything life altering that uh, that i wish i could have back per, per se but um yeah i think I, I think most of it would just be buying stupid stocks and or bitcoin or whatever and, and just making sure i would have enough money now that i could buy more mm. more cool stuff so yeah yeah Cool. I thought it was going to be don't take the Star Wars figures out of the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then I don't. Yeah, the ironic part is, you know, had we not had we known that back then, or if our moms had not thrown out our collections of stuff, yeah, it wouldn't be as worth as much now because they would be there'd be a ton of them on the market. That's so true. that's the yeah. irony of it all. Is uh, you know, everyone's like, oh man, I wish I wouldn't have opened that. I was like, well, if you did, if you didn't yeah it wouldn't be worth as much so and that's where all the joy came from like i had all those wrestlers like those big thick wwf yeah. wrestlers my yeah, brother collected but they got beat to hell now oh, i almost yeah. want to rebuild it as an adult oh yeah sure but yeah yeah i had the ring too and yeah, yeah what do you do with wrestling fees you wrestle with them like what exactly they're, yeah. gonna, they're not there to be looked at and admired no yeah yeah, yeah. Throw them off the top rope, man. Throw them off a roof. <laughs> yeah. Throw them into a pool. Like whatever scenario. Yeah, they're meant to be played with. So, yeah. yeah. That'd be a great idea to go back in time and just take whatever you want to be worth money and destroy everything but one. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Buy it all up. Kind so of a totally agree that a funny one. He just said, watch for falling trees, taxis, rolling rocks, crazy exes, and grabby priests. Okay. Well, <laughs> long list. <laughs> 
Um, luckily, I don't, yeah, I didn't. I don't have to worry about much of those. So <laughs> I'm sorry you did, but it probably shaped you into the amazing young man that you are now. So. <laughs> what a positive way to look at it. Yeah. Uh, and the second question is, what had to end in your life, either good or bad, that uh, led you to where you are today? Oh man, I, I I think you know multiple jobs that I had that uh I, I've geez, I've been laid off from so many jobs I can't even count um and it felt like the end of the world at the time but I was like you know what that job sucked yeah you know, later on you know hindsight you know you end up getting something better but I've worked in the corporate world I've worked as a government contractor I I yeah I, I've been in the cubicle and uh, you know those are. Those are fun, steady jobs, I guess, and they funded the toy addiction for a while, I guess. But ultimately, that was eight, ten hours of a, of your day that you didn't doing something you didn't want to do. So, right. Um, so yeah, I'm glad those <laughs> very glad those ended. Kind of led me to be like, you know what, the life is too short. Go have fun, man. Go have awesome. fun. Hopefully, you can support yourself doing that, doing it. And uh, you might, have, you know, it'll be good days and bad days, but uh, as long as I'm, like. 90% of them are awesome. Yeah. Which so far so good. Uh, you know, you're onto something there for sure. So, um, and I get, I, I don't know. Comic book man ended. I, I hate that it did though. It stinks. Yeah. I really love doing it, but yeah. I don't know where that might lead to. I don't know. Uh, it, it, it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's kind of funny. I think all this, all these stuff, all this stuff that's coming back, you know, can you imagine like, uh, like Cobra Kai, can you imagine like Sensei Kreese going like, what? <laughs> they want to do it again really right and and it's gonna attract a whole new audience and maybe even be bigger than the originals yeah you know you couldn't yeah but for for a while i mean karate kid was out of the public eye for you oh, know a couple right. decades you couldn't predict maybe. that coming back or you know, even you know what it's fine even star wars for a while no one talked about star wars for years after yeah. River, uh, return of the jedi ended george lucas was kind of like yeah i'm done i'm not gonna make any more Right. It, you know, if no one really talked about Star Wars until really until Kevin talked about it in Clerks, I want to say. Yeah. In 94. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you never know what, what what's going to come back. So, uh, yeah, who knows? You know, comic book men may come back in some form or the other. That'd be I great. don't know when. I don't know how. Maybe bigger than it was before. You just you just never know. Yeah. Um, but I think my advice I always give to kids is like, you know, whatever you love doing, keep doing it, you know, because good things will probably happen. So Absolutely. So uh, I'm going to take that into adulthood as well and uh, take that advice. So, and, uh, and that's what we're doing now. We're podcasting with each other. Like I, this is what I want to do at this yeah. exact moment. So absolutely. Yeah. And I have, I have one, uh, I'm going to throw one more at you. Yeah, if, you could vo- if you could voice any superhero, who would it be? Oh man, that's a good one. I don't know, man. My voice, uh, cause I meet all these voice actors. They're really good. <laughs> they're, they're great. And not only that, they're so talented. They could do 40, 50, yeah, different distinct voices, iconic voices. We'll go for the that, '90s cartoons too, because they were the best. I think the X Men '90s, Spider Man '90s, Batman, all those uh, early cartoon shows are the best. I think. Oh yeah, for sure. That you know, I I think I I probably go with Spider Man then. I if I could just wisecrack the whole time. Mm. That'd, that'd be, be great. That's a good choice. Yeah, or uh, I would love to voice. I would have loved to voice the G- like a major GI Joe character back in the '80s uh, for yeah. sure. Which one though? I don't know. And it, it seemed like voice acting is such a hard, like, uh, like such a hard job. Um, you know, like Skeletor, like Alan Oppenheimer. Oh. That's that's got to be work, man, to do right. that. I, I, that. I can't even do it. But yeah, I was just gonna say, yeah. neither can, uh, there's no way I'd be hoarse. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, those um, were good. It's weird how like, do you like the the? I think the X Men '90s cartoon is the best one they've oh, ever done. Oh, dude. Yeah, I actually recently started rewatching them. They're they're on Disney Plus. Me too. Disney uh, bought Fox. They're all on there, and they hold up, man. They're yeah, they really do. Good. Yeah. They, they just really did well the stories, done. which I don't understand why no other cartoon follows suit with. They just yeah. never picked it back up again. Yeah. It's yeah. A shame. I, yeah. I say that one's probably due for some kind of resurgence at some point, too. I hope so, I dude, before do any more of the voice actors die off. Because yeah. I know that Cal Dodd's still around. <laughs> there two, I think two of them are passed away, which is just shitty to yeah. say. But, yeah. You know. I mean, that just means we're old. So, yeah. That or is. it means this is your chance, John and Ming. <laughs> yeah, it could be. <laughs> We're gonna slide right in there and finish Gambit and Scott. It is. We got, we got all the gear, so we could. Yeah, that's true. That's voice. Just start doing it. We'll do the. We'll we'll redub the old cartoons and try to get <laughs> try to and change the storyline. Yeah, that would be pretty killer. Yeah, I'd watch a, it. Yeah, who needs an audition? That's our that's our audition right there. <laughs> right there for sure. 
Oh, it's so fucking good. Um, I will thank you so much for coming on, dude. I oh, really man, appreciate thank you guys, it. man. I, I, I will love to come back anytime. I mean, yeah. we could totally go another two, three hours for sure. But absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, let's do it again soon. Yeah, and you guys are somewhat local. Come down to the studio anytime. We'll do it in person. Cool. Great, man. Looking thank forward you. to it. We'll definitely it. Yeah. hang soon. Thanks awesome. so much. Thanks, Later, guys. Dystopia Tonight.